Welcome to Paradigms at Paradigms.life, the radio show and podcast that brings you inspired, inspiring people with visions of a viable future for life on Earth that includes humans. Hi, I'm Baruch, host of Paradigms. Thanks for tuning in. We've got an interesting show. We were welcoming back a wonderful artist, composer, songwriter, performer, who's just released a new album. I think you're going to really love what she has to say, and the music is really gorgeous. We're also going to be talking about what's happened in the last week here regarding the Supreme Court of the United States and some of the decisions they've released in the last week that literally roll back the clock and disenfranchise half the population. Heavy stuff. So first we'll be meeting our wonderful guest and then stick around for some commentary at the end of the episode. All right, let's meet my guest now on this episode of Paradigms. Hannah Bayardi, welcome back to Paradigms. Thank you so much, Brooke. It's really an honor to be back uh, again this year on Paradigms. It's really nice to have you back. And this time we're doing the call on Zoom and we can actually see each other. And yes, your new record, Magic, well named. It's really beautiful. I listened to it this morning. You've gone into a whole, uh, I want to say it's not different from what you were doing, but it's fleshed out. You know, the production is more expansive and there's more voices. It's very rich. So I'm I'm just very interested to hear about the inspiration, the creation. And, and this record also seems to very much be telling us a personal story. And I, I'd like to know what that is. Around this time last year, um, I, I had a lot of voice memos on my phone, a lot of things I wanted to record. And I was introduced um, to, well, I guess reintroduced to a colleague at the University of Michigan where I went to, to study jazz. It's been a while now, 2018, I was a graduate um, of the jazz program. And um, one, of, one of the colleagues in another department, the vocal department, a couple of them, David and Marty, we started working together a little bit more in recent years. And David said to me, hey, you know, you should work with my friend Marty. He's a great producer. And so we started kind of working out of his home studio in Ann Arbor. We kind of started working together. We had a really good like working synergy. And around that time, um, over the next coming months, I started writing a lot of music that was very personal and kind of spoke to, it reflected a lot of the things that were going on in my life, kind of dovetailing into sort of what I like to say, like a spiritual kind of journey or a growth spurt for me. I felt the sudden urge to go out and buy a lot of books, like a whole shelf of books, a couple of them here, like Sanaya Romans, like Living with Joy, like Sex Shaman, Sound Healing, Warrior Goddess Training. And I kind of went down the rabbit hole of like reading and feeling the energy from these books and so inspired, one of which was actually Tara Brock's um, Radical Acceptance that became kind of the cornerstone of the album. That, that's how it began, the magical, I'll call it kind of the magical songwriting evolution that took place this last year. Well, the songs are beautiful, and because their instrumentation is more and the production is more, as I said, expansive, it gives us a different entree into what you're experiencing and sharing. It's got so much texture, and I love it. So tell me about these songs. Sure. <laughs> And uh, yeah, you're right. I think this was a more of an expansive texture and a new sound for me. A lot of them, um, in people in my life were pleasantly surprised. Some of them a little shocked. They're like, wow, okay, you're more R&B jazz. And now you're like getting into new age and, and kind of gospel and blues. And I'm like, hey, it's all in me. The bottle up is just like a matter of when it comes out, how it comes out. I've always known I've kind of had it that desire to write music that's very like radically authentic to me in a very meaningful way. And I knew deep down that kind of won't fit into a neat little box. And that's kind of about, that's my MO, that's who I am. Let's talk about Magic Key. Okay. Let's just jump right in. I, I wrote that song kind of as like a call and response. When I think of that song, I have to think of the other song before it, Seduction, that I wrote earlier. Seduction for me is about kind of this idea of a sacred energy exchange and that kind of came from a personal place in my life, feeling, you know, when you share a really, really special connection with something or someone, you know, sometimes it does things to your chakra system <laughs> and it actually does things to, to your body and your energy. And it takes you kind of on this ride. 
And that's something I was not expecting at all. And it kind of, again, dovetailed into this spiritual um, journey. The more I read, the more dots started to connect. And I felt just a very, very lifted and inspired time in my life where writing music for the first time was really effortless and it was easy. It felt too easy, it felt criminally easy because <laughs> I focused so much on an, on an emotion. I already had a little experience with kind of how to channel and let kind of the energy work through me and write through me. But the energy was so focused on one emotion that it felt like music just came gushing out. And so for Magic Key, there was so much like pathos and kind of resistance I felt that just wanted to come out into this song. And there was like this kind of side of me, it was like a more masculine side of me that wanted to kind of really, you know, sing with reckless abandon and very strongly. It's like the, the ego is aside and this is just Hannah, you know, being really, really honest with herself. And so seduction is more of that, like feeling the energy of someone or something and kind of being resistant. And Magic Key was like, okay, this is the allowing. This is like, all right, we're going to lean into that energy. You're listening to my conversation with Hannah Bayardi, wonderful pianist, songwriter, composer. Let's hear something now from her new record, Magic, and then we'll be back with more of the conversation. Here's the first song Hannah and I were talking about, Magic Key. You're listening to Paradigms at Paradigms.life. Show me what I've been afraid to see. frequencies. I'm ready now. I've kept my heart on lockdown. But I'm scared because you hold the key. It's gonna be a victory. A perfect fit. Against my walls and guts, they're crashing down, they're burning down. Don't you see where this leaves me now? Wide open, raw doors open. It's cold, and I'm lonely now. You're standing too far from me. Where's the body heat? Where's the chemistry? There's too much room to breathe Where's that love I need? Where's that passion I seek You know me Or oh, don't you? Too much, too much, too much, too much, too much I'm starving for your touch I'm starving for your touch I'm starving for you I'm starving for your touch I've kept my heart on rest but now I'm over there Bust it wide open Put that damn key in the lock My body crazy shock It's wrong, they say I wouldn't have it any damn
victory I think I'm ready for the truth They say it hurts Somehow I think I'm ready to hear it Either way Lay it on me Magic Key From Hannah Bayardi's new album Magic She's got some serious piano chops obviously And singing But the song It's got some, some heft all right, here's the next part of my conversation with Hannah Bayardi. The books you're talking about and the music, you're talking a lot about joy, but not joy like, oh, isn't that easy and light? Like joy like, oh, this is actually a practice to focus on and it's a piece of work. Definitely. And one of the songs, Heavy, kind of explores that. Yes, side it of sure the does. Hey, we can have a lot of ups in, in our lives, and but also, you know, just with the heaviness globally of the world, I consider myself to be an empath, you know, there's a lot of weight that I feel we have kind of absorbed and couple that with our own individual lives and you get all kind of unique dynamic there. This is it. This is where we find ourselves right now, because on the one hand, joy is essential. It's fuel to keep us going. Right now, there's a lot of pain and suffering and there's fear and there's anger and people are struggling with what to do with those those feelings and we're we're seeing a lot of violence you know here and in other countries but violence here in the united states unprecedented amount of just violence and and i'll be honest with you i mean we're humans so i'm in the same struggle like how do we get up in the morning and do what we have to do and feel good or maybe not feel good but be part of solutions when there is that heaviness, that all that pain, I'm not expecting you to have the answer, but oh no, <laughs> that's a that's a daily quest, my friend. That's a daily quest. <laughs> For me, that the I guess one thing that came to mind is, as you said, that is the, the ongoing challenge, just personally to remain in the moment, which is something that mindfulness is really helpful in. But you know, when your thoughts want us to go so far into the future or dwell on the past, I think that you know, waking up and you know, just being appreciative of what we have and what we're grateful for. That's actually one of the one of the topics and feelings I was very aware as I wrote magic was two were two things were the feeling of compassion and gratitude kind of became my fuel for the album. It was a time when I was very prolific, very creative, and I was very much in the moment and of the moment. And looking back now, it's like, wow, I wish I could stay in there forever. It's such a blissful place to be. <laughs> something to be said for being deeply involved in the creative process it really does you have to be present and what that makes me think about then is okay so when we're not present are we less engaged in our creativity is that in a way one of the antidotes because not everyone's going to find a a sitting practice or a, you know whatever to focus on becoming present but maybe it's as simple as just engage your creativity yeah, I think that's a huge part of it. It definitely brings you back to the to the present moment and allows you to really work through things you're you're feeling and the play kind of like captures where you, a moment in time. And we're jumping all over with these tracks. Two of these tracks you have guest singers singing with you. Yes. Which was really fun to hear and they're beautiful songs. Maybe tell us about Lot Lot and what we were just talking about, Heavy. Sure, Lot Lot. Um, yeah, both of those are amazing collaborations with friends in, in the area that are that are artists and amazing musicians. So Lot Lot featured Joey Huey, and he's part of a um, kind of hip-hop rap collective in Ann Arbor called Good Vibes Only GBO. I met him through my producer, Marty, and we hit it off, and he just was super talented, and, and he I think he really understood the, the feeling and the vibe of the song. We were like, hey, you know, do you want to rap over this? And then he came into the studio, and he did this beautiful verse that he sang, and it really fit, I think, with the, the message and the feeling of the song, and so it was really a joy to work with him. And then for Heavy, this was a collaboration with David Magumba, who was a former colleague at U of M, also a voice major. We had been kind of simmering with the song for a while. I showed it to him a few years ago and I kind of just put it on the back burner. And then when we revisited it about a year ago, we were like, hey, we should pick this back up. And he kind of brought this new 
richness with the harmony. And I think, again, someone who just really understood the message I was trying to convey and also the feeling like that goes into it too. It's, it's a beautiful thing when, when you work with artists who really get your music. And I think very few words have to be conveyed for someone to feel the essence of your song. And then you kind of see it reflected back to you or you hear it reflected back to you when they contribute their part. We'll be back with more of my conversation with Hannah Bayardi, talking a bit about just what it's like to get this music out there into the world. But here's another song that Hannah was talking about. It's called Seduction. I have always wondered what they feel inside. What of your seduction that keeps them hypnotized? What of your mystique, a method to your madness Makes them go weak, like a tonic to their sadness A streak of Casanova lingers in your a look of innocence poses as disguise One too many pleasures, have you lost track of time? A blurry satisfaction, lost in the sublime I won't fall into your web, I won't jump into your bed I won't fall into your eyes, I will not stay mesmerized I will promise you a fight, I won't cave in tonight Seduction by Hannah Bayardi from her new record, Magic. Not your average love song. Not your average love song. Okay, here's the next part of my conversation with Hannah Bayardi. It's pretty amazing when something that you have put out into the world that comes really through your deepest self gets reflected back in a way where you get to experience it. It's very powerful. It's very powerful. I put this record on and I just felt like I'm listening to some of the really good jazz, like a good meal, something really delicious and healthy and organic and made with love. Thank you. I love that. That's like the coolest thing I've heard. That's how it felt writing this. It was very spiritual, transformative. I was very much, you know, going on walks and being a part of Gaia and just kind of soaking in everything 
took everything I had to write this. And it, it really, it's funny because now I feel so exhausted. It's like a, I, it's a bit dramatic perhaps to use this analogy, but it's something like giving birth. How would I know, right? I mean, one day, but I, I, from what I can use as a metaphor that's potent enough to capture it, it's what it felt like to me at a very deep guttural level, just like it took everything I had to do this. And now I'm like, whoa, whoo, <laughs> what was that that just happened? <laughs> Well, yeah, it is a birth. It's all about life force. It's all about life force moving through you. And let's see, last week, Mike Stevens was on. He's a harmonica player. Same thing. It's like the when you breathe and then you put it out, whether it's through an instrument or with words or both, you're taking the life force that comes from around us, putting it through you and turning it into something that feeds us that same life force in a different way. I mean... I think music is just the greatest thing human beings have ever in invented. The older I get, the more I feel that way. And, and this is part of that. So you did this. It's out. People are hearing it. I'm sure you're getting attention. I'm sure it must be on the radio next Grammy season. We'll see what happens. I'm not in the, the group that's allowed to nominate. Otherwise, I would. But what happens next? Yeah, it's an exciting part of the journey because now I get to take off my sort of creator hat and put on the marketing hat. So radio has been a part of it. Some grassroots kind of um, working with a manager, um, really close friend who's kind of filled some very big shoes in terms of, you know, reaching out to labels and producers and the like and radio stations and to get the word out as much as possible. I was looking at doing some digital campaigns. I actually did some for my single. This has been more of a grassroots kind of effort for this album. You know, as it goes being an independent artist, you know, a lot of the funds go into producing the album. And then sometimes you're left in the position of being kind of independently funding a lot of your marketing. Marketing. So I think the shows, um, I do have a show on June 12th for the Ann Arbor Summer Festival that is coming up pretty soon next week. And then after that, you know, always looking for more shows, hopefully a tour down the road, <laughs> looking to collaborate um, with other songwriters and producers and, you know, start working with from artists from around the world. I think I, I'm leaning more into the non-Western kind of global sounds. I'm as I'm just looking at the musical landscape right now, what I see so many young artists doing, you know, using instruments, kind of like in the song Shaman off Magic, that aren't necessarily Western instruments, you know, your bass, piano, drums, keyboard, you know, you're going to be bringing in djembe or, you know, it's some Native American, you know, flute or, or didgeridoo. And you start hearing flavors of this. And to me, that provides so much hope because it's like, oh, finally, we can get out of the Western idealist like realm of this is how music should sound and start like incorporating these rich timbres and colors of other instruments. And so I think that's something that's definitely on my bucket list is to work with artists who have that kind of global flair. And that's a great song. It's really a call to everyone to awaken the shaman within is what I got from it. This is you. Right, right, right. Like they're always looking for answers outside of us, right? But they're really living deep inside, just peeling back those layers. That was a really cool song that, um, it was cool because my producer Marty had like already, like I stepped into this like musical playground. He he loves collecting instruments. So he had like a bunch of um, uh, instruments that have been like gifted to him or that he got over the years. And I just like started picking things up and being like, oh, you know, I think this would be a good, you know, fit or work really nicely. And that kind of, timbre, that texture that started evolving, I think will be a part of a lot of future music, hopefully that I write. One thing I want to get more into is like sound healing and start, you know, writing piano music that perhaps works on different maybe chakra systems or kind of is personalized in a way. Um, I think that's a whole area that we have yet to tap into kind of the healing vibration of, of music. I'm all about that. <laughs> that's really great. And I remember when we talked last time, we were saying, I was saying, you're at the beginning of this amazing journey and you're taking off. You're taking off. This is great. And this, your second full record, I sat down and listened to uh, your first record, which is Straight From The Soul. I sat down and listened to some of that after I listened to Magic because I wanted to kind of hear where you've evolved. And it's clear that you have. It's going to be really interesting to see what happens next. And Shaman is pointing, as you're saying, it's pointing you in a direction. So 
I'm really excited to hear how that is going to be. And I imagine you're already playing more with those instruments. That's on my to-do. I'm still in the early stages of like learning how to use a microphone and recording my, my own instrument, the piano. But um, with something on my list is to create a, um, a solo piano album and kind of get into stripping everything away and just having the piano breathe. It's very sacred to me because when I started writing music when I was around four or five, the first thing I wanted to do is write and compose at the piano. And it was so profoundly healing looking back for me as a way to ground myself and kind of process things. And now I say, well, hmm, all right, if it was that powerful for me, maybe it's powerful for other people too, you know? And I think of artists like George Winston and I know it is because the music is gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. One other artist I love listening to lately is Carlos Nakai, who's such a discography, Native American flutist, and he collaborates a lot with pianists and other artists. And when I hear that, that confluence of energy and all those instruments together, I'm like, okay, that's, that's potent. That, <laughs> woo, that's, that should be a prescription to listen to that for an hour while you're meditating. And I think about all the vibrational healing that can happen. And it's just like, wow, we're just at the tip of the ice. Isn't Hannah great? I hope you're enjoying the conversation and the music. Love to see your comments. Here's a song that Hannah was talking about, one of the wonderful duets on this new record, Magic. It's called Heavy. This is Paradigms at Paradigms.life.
This is not home This is not over This is a fight That we'll do together But take a load, take a load off of me Just take a load, make it one pound lighter, baby So much heavy Heavy by Hannah Bayardi from her new record, Magic. And it is, it's a heavy song, but it's got some light in it too. Okay, here's the next part of my conversation with Hannah Bayardi. One thing lots of people have said, and you know, we know that often, you know, the darkest before the dawn and all that kind of thing, and things are pretty rough right now in a lot of ways. Everything's crumbling down. There are like tower moments everywhere. <laughs> it really feels like that. And Hopefully that is the precursor to some real growth. It often is, and I'm hoping it is now. Maybe like a renaissance period, you know, where, where artists and musicians and healers will come to the forefront. It's like, um, you know, the, this next wave that really sets the path for, for mass planetary healing, I hope. I hope. I mean, the art is clearly part of the healing. One of the things that I'm learning, I'll just share with you, because I'm older now, I'm in my 60s, and the way getting older is affecting at least me, and I hear this from other people too, is it's like, for some folks, it's like, no holds barred, they just jump into everything. I find myself doing that less and less. I find myself feeling it's harder and harder to stay positive, frankly. Depression and aging often are a thing. It's really interesting, and we need your young voices and thoughts and visions. There's a lot of criticism of the older generation. There always is by every younger generation. I criticize the generation before me. That's to be expected. And hopefully it motivates change and growth and learning. But we really need each other. And so I feel like having someone like you, you know, in a, in a much earlier part of your life, putting out this very, really loving, very positive music that's not Pollyanna positive. It's real positive. It address, I mean, heavy is heavy, but it's still positive. You know, we need each other. And so in, in acknowledging that, I want to say the other gaps in our society, I guess we also need each other, but we don't know how to bridge those right now. And so I find myself asking everyone I talk with about their thoughts about that. 
So what are your thoughts about that? Sure. Well, I wholeheartedly agree. And I, I do think bridging those divides are really um, where the healing begins once we can kind of address what we have in common instead of what we do not. What do you see happening between people where dialogue is possible? Or what do you see happening where maybe it isn't looking possible, but it gives you an inspiration? Because mm. I think it's up to each of us to do this. And I'm struggling with it personally. Yeah. Yeah, I think it takes a lot of courage to be honest and vulnerable. Um, something writing this album has really opened up in my heart. To, to speak from the heart space instead of sometimes speaking from layers and layers of pain and cynicism, which I think has kind of corroded the society we live in. A lot of the ways we connect are through cynicism and through being jaded and through, um, you know, ways to connect to me that, that just don't feel of the highest vibration. I think if we're telling our own truth and our own stories, in essence, that's us reaching out a hand to someone who's different and saying, hey, your turn to be vulnerable. Where can we meet halfway? Instead of speaking from a place of, um, you know, fear or future projection. I think that can be applied to politics, you know, to technology to you know every every system and and um, area right now that seem seemingly is flipped upside down or crumbling so that's just something that um a lot of the reading has has shown me is that once we kind of tap into our our heart space and and really speak from a true true vulnerable place i think that's when the magic really happens with dialogue and progress it's not easy. I mean, I just wrote an album and it felt like I'm a whole new person. And then some days I ask myself, am I cut out for this? I mean, gosh, this is one album, one phase. I mean, what's the next one going to bring? Yeah, yeah. If, if it can touch someone, if it's meaningful to just one person that I can, I'm done. Like, I feel like I've, I've achieved what I wanted to. Now, granted, I have a huge growing bucket list, but if I can reach people and make them feel lighter, heard, seen, then I know that I'm on the right track. Well, you're on the right track, both straight from the soul and this one magic, and even the, the quietest place, which was shorter. All of your music is so clearly coming through exactly the stuff you're talking about, who you are. And that's the gift, you know, to us, you sharing yourself with us. It's all, always a gift when we share ourselves in a real way and, and you're doing it. And I, I really love the way you talk about this. I'm glad it resonates with you. That means so much to me. You put it out there and you know, you're like, all right. But when you see someone that really absorbs it and likes it and reson it resonates with them, that just makes you want to keep writing. Well, music is like a bomb. It's like a salve, you know, and right now there's a lot of wounds. And so right. we need lots of that. And so all hail the artists of the world. Yes. <laughs> it's a small that I hope is growing and rising up and being more respected for the first time in history, because we certainly historically have not been respected as many, many groups of people have not. So hopefully this is a mass, like I said, a mass period of healing. We'll be back with the final part of my conversation with Hannah Bayardi after we hear this song, Lot Lot, featuring Joey Huey on vocals with Hannah. We got a lot, lot to lose We got a lot, lot at stake We gonna break, break the rules Right in on waves We made it, I wrote up Talking about energy and love Don't play those games We've been through in a shit, babe Gonna get it, uh, Got it gonna bless it, babe, like we should. This life, uh, uh, gonna share these riches, uh, gonna bear these cup, uh, uh, gonna flow. Maybe somehow, uh, you just know. i 
gonna get it, uh Gotta cook Gonna bless it, babe Like we should This life, uh, uh Gonna share These riches, uh Gonna bear These cup, uh, uh Gonna flow Maybe somehow, uh You just know Lot Lot from Hannah Bayardi's new record, Magic. I hope you're enjoying this music. I just think she's great. Here's the final part of my conversation with Hannah Bayardi. One of the great things about all this technology is that it allows people who aren't on a big label, who might not get on a big label, to put their art out and lots of people can appreciate it. And I think that's just the bee's knees, you know, it really is. Because we need all of this. We all need all of it, you know, whether it's your music or music from people recording from different traditions in Africa or European traditions or South American or all this stuff, the Pacific Islander stuff. We had some folks on who are doing amazing music. I mean, it's all happening all around the world. People are making incredible art and music. And I wish that was what the headlines were about. Or refreshing, right? <laughs> Nippy. You'll have to let me know about some of the sort of, sort of um, popular, maybe indigenous instruments in, in Jamaica when you visit and if there's anything that, you know, we can, I could incorporate or, or, or learn from. The big stuff is, is drumming. Hmm. Drumming is really big in terms of traditional music. Um, there's a band, they were on this show a million years ago called the Uprising Roots. And they are a very traditional reggae band. They live in the hills. They are Rastas who practice their religion very truthfully. It's not just what people think, you know, Rastas are just people with dreadlocks who smoke weed. No, it's a spiritual path. And they make incredible music. So things like guitars and all that originally, you know, everything comes from Africa. And guitars and all those things do too. And the original guitars, you know, the less fancily made, the Zulu guitar style, those things are also part of what's integrated into Jamaican music because it's very African. It's mm -hmm. a very African country, but it's mostly percussion and a lot of dance. Now then, now there's the modern dance hall music and all that, with, which is something else, not traditional, although it's now its own tradition. I love, don't you love to see that, how it integrates, how you do something that's traditional and kind of takes a modern spin and then, oh, wait, wait, what do we call it? Is, you know, and I'm like, well, let's just take away the label. It's fascinating. A lot of the dance hall music has been kind of ugly lyric wise. Now more women are getting involved with dance hall music and making it about things that are not ugly, which is also really great. It's like a lot of women rappers changed rap from being about sex and drugs and violence to talking about relationships and talking about sex and drugs and violence from a different, not aggrandizing perspective. So it's all evolving. Wow, that, that's refreshing. That, that gives me hope too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
especially, you know, being a woman in, woman in music, a part of many women, you know, that know that we're finally taking ownership and, you know, really stepping into our, our roles as, as equals, you know, as songwriters and producers and collaborators, which is such an empowering time. I mean, it's nonetheless daunting because when you're kind of at the forefront of that and in, in that frontier, you really have to lean on, your, as you say, your brothers or your sisters or people in your tribe to learn from them and keep you going. And what's, what's wild is that you are still, that is still a forefront. It shouldn't be anymore, you know, but being a woman in the arts, especially in music, especially in performance, and is still harder, I think, in some ways than being a man. Yeah, there's, I think, less of a sense of mentorship and kind of legacy, I think, and then kind of help each other learn the ropes and help you out, help you out. And for women, that that pool is a lot smaller. And then a lot of times, too, you can get a, that competitive edge, like, well, I'm out for myself. And I'm like, well, come on, ladies, let's not work from the ego. That's what all this past millennium has taught us to do. Oh, let's, yeah. not, let's not work from that space. And there's some amazing new records up. Bonnie Raitt's new record is just fantastic. I don't know if you've heard it yet, but I want to. I want it's to. It's really good. Well, Hannah, I love talking with you. I love your music. I think it's great what you're doing. And uh, just going to get this out to as many people as possible. People should hear this. Thank you so much, Brooke. I really appreciate you having me back again. I always enjoy your conversations. I find them really um, stimulating and enlightening. And I hope to speak with you again very soon. Hannah Bayardi, thank you so much for being on the show again, for bringing us this wonderful music, your new album, Magic. Folks, if you're enjoying this music and Hannah, I highly encourage you to check out her website, hannahbayardi.com, H-A-N-N-A-H-B-A-I-A-R-D-I.com. Hannah is definitely someone to keep an eye on or an ear. Thank you so much, Hannah. And if you enjoyed this episode of Paradigms, I hope you'll check out our archive at the Paradigms website, paradigms.life, and in iTunes and wherever else you find your podcasts. Also, Paradigms is now on YouTube. We have a YouTube channel with videos of our episodes. Just go to YouTube and look for Paradigms Podcast. Paradigms has a Patreon campaign going, patreon.com slash paradigms. I hope you'll visit that page too and become a supporter. We really appreciate our Patreon supporters. The following opinions are those of myself and do not reflect the positions of any radio station playing this show. I want to take a little time to talk about what's going on here in the U.S., this week, the Supreme Court of the United States made it easier for people to have dangerous weapons on the street, unregulated, and they basically struck down women's right to autonomy over their own bodies. And one of the so-called Supreme Court justices, Clarence Thomas, made it clear that he is going to go after contraception and marriage equality next. So the United States is quickly succumbing to a right-wing, theocratic, what I call a Christofascist agenda, which is the enforcement of Christian beliefs on everybody else. And the United States was formed in part to prevent and relieve people of that very burden of having religion forced upon them. And yet here we find ourselves after decades of both subtle and not-so-subtle efforts from the political right, we find the United States becoming a theocracy ruled by the Catholic Church, actually, because six of the justices on the Supreme Court are Catholic, and they are forcing a Catholic agenda on the nation. This is not hyperbole. I'm not even saying this from a point of view. These are just facts. This is just what's actually happening. So what do we do with this? Well, first, everyone's having their emotional response, myself included. I'm angry, and I'm sickened by the hypocrisy and just indecency of the radical right. But now what? So there are lots of organizations. People are organizing. There are marches happening. There's a big push to add justices to the Supreme Court. There's a push to hold accountable the Supreme Court justices who lied during their confirmation hearings, Kavanaugh, Barrett, 
Gorsuch, Alito, Thomas, Roberts, all six of them clearly have lied while under oath. So that's called perjury, and that's illegal. But our country doesn't seem to be a nation of laws so much. The last president we had tried to overturn the election and overthrow the government and still walks free when he should be in prison. His minions are lying and scrambling to try and cover their individual and collective butts from being charged with sedition, of which they are guilty. We saw it happen. We've been watching the big lie and the seditious behavior of, frankly, the Republican Party for years now. And I'm even tentative to name it on the radio because, oh my God, what if I'm being unbalanced? But this is unbalanced. The political right is seeking power, and they are a minority in this country, but they are seeking to control the whole country in every way they can. They're pushing a violent agenda, a white supremacist agenda, a misogynist agenda, a religious extremist agenda. I usually don't take the time on paradigms to put out this much political stuff. But at this point, firstly, what have I got to lose? And secondly, this stuff needs to be said. So if you're happy with what the Supreme Court did this past week, that's whatever. But if you're not, organize. Find local organizations to be part of. Find national organizations to be part of. And vote, vote, vote. The Democrats are far from perfect. I'm the first to criticize the neoliberal agenda as being heartless and indecent. But we've got to vote for Democrats and get the Republicans out of power. We see Republicans abusing their power all over, even in Vermont, where the governor appointed a Republican to the recently vacated attorney general's seat that had been held by a Democrat, an elected Democrat. Usually when someone resigns from an office like that, the governor will appoint someone from their same party. But Governor Scott didn't. It's a power grab. We see Republican power grabs happening in pretty much every state. My feeling is that those of us who consider ourselves to be on the left mostly just want to do our lives, have good lives, love our families, be creative, do our stuff. And the folks on the right want power and control over us. And so that's what they're pushing for. And that's what the Supreme Court is handing them. But we don't have to go along with it. It's okay. In fact, it's really important to say, no, you don't get to control me. Abortion will not go away just because the radical right has gotten this Supreme Court to pass this judgment. It will just be less safe in some places. And it means that there will be a, a stronger underground railroad. And there are lots of people who will support that. It means that we now are back to having slave states and free states, because in the states where abortion is banned, women are essentially now slaves. They can be forced to give birth, even if it's a pregnancy resulting from rape or incest, and that is the Republican way. So thank you for listening. I hope you feel riled up and enthusiastic about reclaiming and holding on to your rights as a person. Okay, so we're wrapping up the episode, and I'm going to leave you with one more track from Hannah Bayardi's new record, Magic. This one is called Shaman. Enjoy. Baruch signing off for Paradigms. We'll see you next time with more inspired, inspiring people. In the meantime, the word for the week is liberty. Let us celebrate liberty, the freedom to make our own choices. And let us throw that liberty in the faces of those who would deny it to us. And I just want to say, in case it's not clear, Paradigms stands with women and their right to bodily autonomy. All right, we'll see you next time. Until then, celebrate liberty and be well. Oh,
he is still in the stillness of the morning dew. Others drift from mountains high, thirsting for wisdom and guidance. He says, Why are you here when you have all the answers?
over the mountain tops. He flees into the mist, running, a running, a running around, never to be found. You've been listening to Paradigms at paradigms.life.